Hi, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. I'm Peter Yost, Senior Director of Strategic Alliances for Four Cuts. I'm new to this community and really looking forward to meeting you all in person, maybe next year. But in the meantime, I've got one of our friends, Sid Aria from Canfor here, who's going to give you a riveting presentation today about how they're using OTM and the Four Kites real-time visibility tool to track their loads. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now and get us kicked off. Um, it's that one right there. And let's get moving along here. Why is it not moving? Hang on just a second. While Peter is trying to uh, work through the, the presentation there, let me just introduce myself as well. Good morning, all. Uh, my name is Sid Aria. I'm there you go. Loving Canfor as their senior director of enterprise systems. And I've been with Canfor for two years. Uh, the enterprise systems team within the technology uh, group is responsible for leading digital programs and the rollout of applications such as Oracle JD Edwards, Oracle Transportation Management, Demantra, OBIE, Four Kites uh, to the various acquisitions. In the past two decades, I've led uh, large technology uh, led business transformation programs, including the largest digital transformation program that Canfor undertook. Prior to Canfor, I was with Deloitte and have been with various other consulting and industry roles with clients and businesses in different parts of the world, including Singapore, Southeast Asian countries, Australia, New Zealand, and the US. Uh, in addition, I've been a speaker to, at a number of Oracle and user group conferences in the US and Canada. And this is my first time at the OTM SIG conference. Uh, I'm very excited to be here presenting alongside Peter from Four Kites. I'm very appreciative of uh, the OTM SIG board as well. Uh, for their efforts in setting up the virtual digital conference. I, I'm certain that we can all serve great content um, uh, you know, to, to our desktops. However, at some point, look forward to, uh, to rekindling friendships and bonds by attending in-person conferences and meetings. All right, terrific. Thanks, Sid. Let's, uh, let's dive into Peter? this. Yeah. Peter, I'm sorry. Can I interrupt you for a sec? Sure. Uh, can you put the slides in presenter mode so we can see them in full screen? Oh. Sorry, I thought it was in presenter mode. Give me just a second. Okay, can you see them now? Uh, no, I don't think you're sharing anymore. All right, I apologize here. Let me... Um, Thank you're one you. share. It should be at the top under the display settings. There, how's that? There you go. All right, that explained why my advanced thing wasn't working. Okay, apologize for that. Let's pick up the pace just a little bit. Um, and uh, just a quick introduction of Four Kites. Um, you might have seen this slide in uh, Steve's five minute video presentation yesterday, and I think you'll see it again later today. But just um, <clears throat> my point of introduction, most of you may be aware of what Four Kites does, but uh, uh, the level set we track, we predict, and we provide. I'll give you a little bit more information about Four Kites after Sid's presentation, but we're tracking loads in real time, 2 million loads. Uh, every day, uh, largest uh, real-time visibility provider uh, available today across uh, every mode everywhere in the world. So um, we uh, give real-time predictions of what's going on within your transportation network in terms of where freight is, where it's coming, and more importantly, where it's going to be. Uh, real-time alerts and insights help you make better decisions much faster. This slide gives you kind of a cross-section view of uh, some of Four Kites customers that are OTM uh, users as well. Uh, and you see it's kind of a, uh, a who's who's list of a lot of different types of companies. All these companies enjoy Four Kites integrated with their OTM instance, either on-prem or in the cloud. Uh, we've been integrated with OTM for several years and uh, have a large customer base of, uh, of users to prove it. So uh, more on that later on. So what I'd like to do now is turn the microphone over to Sid and let him walk through um, Canfor and give you an introduction to uh, his company and 
how they're using OTM and Forkex. Sid, take it away. All right, let's begin. So before we get going, I hope everyone's staying safe, sheltered in place, talk with toilet paper and healthy during these absolutely unprecedented, wild, chaotic and terrifying times. I know it's uh, totally wide out there. Uh, so just uh, about Canfor, uh, Canfor is a le leading integrated forest products company based in Vancouver, British Columbia. We have several interests in Canada, uh, in BC and Alberta. In the US, uh, we have several interests in North and South Carolina, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, and Arkansas, as well as in Sweden with a re recent acquisition of uh, the Vida Group. So Canfor produces primarily softwood lumber and has a majority stake in Canfor pulp products, which is one of the largest global producers of Northern Breeds uh, Softwood Craft or NBSK pulp, a leading producer of high performance craft paper. So pulp is uh, primarily used to make different grades of paper, sheets of wood fibers that have been extracted from wood chips and chemically treated to extract specifications depending on their end use. Uh, in addition, Canfor is also a North American leader in green energy production. The residuals such as barks, sawdust, shavings from our lumber operations become a source of fiber for our pulp mills um, and they are used to heat our sawmills or turn into pallets that are exported as a green fuel source. Lastly, uh, independent third party certifications such as FSC or Forest Stewardship Council and the Sustainable Forest Initiative or SFI, um, you know, they certify our forest management activities that provide customers and stakeholders with assurance of sustainability. So that's Canfor uh, for you. Next slide, please, Peter. If you can move on to the next one. Okay, uh, so in the next few slides, it is my intention to present to you and discuss Canfor's digital transformation journey and how Forkites is helping us provide real time shipment visibility. We will discuss some challenges and competing priorities with other projects that were on the go and finally how it all came together and lined up nicely for the business. Next slide, Peter. So firstly, Project Edge. Uh, Canfor envisioned a digital transformation program between 2011 and 2013 timeframe. That was the birth of Project Edge or Enterprise Design for Global Excellence. It's an acronym, uh, a technology led business transformation program. Essentially, EDGE was implementation of a corporate-wide, highly integrated uh, system for production and demand forecasting, uh, integrated inventory planning, quotes and sales order fulfillment, logistics and distribution planning, and full financials, including AR, AP, GL, fixed assets, and, and the whole shebang. It has transformed the existing technology and business processes, improved the quality of information available to operate the business. And from a technology standpoint, we have implemented Oracle JD Edwards, Oracle Transportation Management, Demantra, OBIE, and in the later years, uh, we went on to other um, real-time visibility platforms such as Forex and so on. Create a, so the whole vision was to create a common platform across the entire organization, act as an enabler for the future business integrations and acquisitions that come by, and provide advanced uh, analytics and reporting capabilities to grow the business in terms of um, you know, analytics and reporting cell. So those are the, some of the objectives that were set out uh, for this digital transformation journey. Next slide, Peter. So the background here is very important for us to understand as it sets the context for what I'm going to say in the upcoming slides as well. So program was delivered here in phases. As you see those one, two, three, and four marks, those were kind of the phases of uh, in which this program uh, you know, pursued, was pursued. So first, even before we got to this point, the vendor and application selection process took a long while. We started in November of 2011, and by August 2012, we had honed in on Oracle as the leading products um, um, you know, choice for us. And then Deloitte was our implementation partner of choice. Uh, so comprised of an implementation team with the right experience and expertise, Canfor began its journey. So phase one was focused on the uh, Canadian lumber mills. In, in scope were 13 lumber mills that were spread up across uh, British Columbia and Alberta. And the project took approximately 20 months to complete, laying a foundation for um, you know, a platform that could be taken to other sites and deployed in elsewhere 
including the acquisitions that Canfor had made during the time that first phase was being done uh, in the US. <clears throat> so phase two was then focused on the CSP East or Canfor Southern Pine East uh, mills, which are four mills, uh, you know, and, and that project took about nine months to complete, which was focused on the mills in the, the Carolinas. Uh, started in 2015, and by the end of 2015, we had a global U.S. model that could be uh, deployed to any of the U.S. mills uh, per se as well. And you know, and as as you had it, there were a number of other acquisitions that Canfor made during the same time that the second phase of the implementation was going specifically in the central U.S. region, including Mississippi, Arkansas, and so on. So the third phase was focused on the CSP West and the four acquisitions and the nine mills that were there in four states. Uh, took about 14 months to complete. Uh, we had specialty products as well in the mix for which we developed a unique solution and deployed it in this time frame. Having you know, uh, succeeded with all of this by year 2018, um, or rather, sorry, but even before that in phase, uh, we started off this journey for phase four, uh, where we said, hey, Everything is working great. We have, uh, you know, JD Edwards and Oracle Transportation working for us uh, beautifully. It, we have a chance now to replace our aging financial system and moving all of our financials onto JD Edwards. So we took um, uh, the the punt on, you know, replacing that uh, financials project uh, and started that journey in January of 2018. Uh, replacing Oracle EBS with JD Edwards, and so that project kicked off in 2018, and you know finished in uh, in late 2018 as well. So by 2018, all of our lumber operations were running on a single integrated platform. Uh, importantly, Edge enabled the supply chain integration across Canfor's acquired entities to access new customers and markets. Edge enabled process standardization and shared or sharing of best practices across the different regions for the lumber, uh, lumber side of the business. So the natural journey in this program was to achieve the same level of transformation for the pulp business as well. So the phase uh, four or phase uh, you know, 4.2 was essentially to bring the pulp business onto the edge platform as well. We started the journey sometime in June, 2017 by doing a current state assessment. The teams that had been deployed uh, were more you know, um, more uh, had a better understanding of the lumber side of the business. So we wanted to do a current state assessment and bring a good understanding of the pulp side of the business to the project team. So the current state assessment was a key in that regard. So the pulp project uh, ramped up at the same time as the financials implementations. Uh, there was a time of overlap uh, between the two projects. Um, and in, in the midst of, you know, doing these projects, uh, there was a parallel project that had started as well, and I have to bring that on here because it sets the context for later conversation in terms of infrastructure migration to AWS Cloud. So the project started off essentially to devious scan for from specialized infrastructure knowledge, residing with a few key individuals, and then um, we looked at a deep uh, look at a variety of products, uh, variety of platforms that are across the place, and settled for AWS in in in, in that journey. So hopefully. Uh, it gives a sense to, to everyone. It gives you a background on the, our digital transformation journey or through our various phases across lumber and pulp, and then also deploying all of this onto the, all of these on-prem applications onto the cloud as well. Next slide, Peter. So the need for real-time visibility. So, um, so as we stood up a platform, an Oracle-based platform, uh, the business realized that realize the next thing to tackle would be to have a better uh, control and visibility of different legs <clears throat> of a shipment. Visibility across some or all of legs of an international multimodal shipment to keep pulse of the inventory and container locations and to get perspective insights on, to, uh, on the estimated time of arrival and potential delays or disruptions. So in the times before we embark on reviewing the various real-time transportation visibility platforms, we were not able to provide ETAs for trucks and oceans, although we did have for rail cars, EDI 214 and CN paper platform. Uh, but the worst part was for us uh, that the customers were providing information on time when the shipments arrived at our doorstep. Uh, next slide, Peter. So the vision for the visibility with four kites, um, you know, it's on the screen right there, but I, I wanna stress a, a few things in here. So when 
we evaluated four types against uh, their comp competitors in the marketplace across a number of factors. We chose four kites and, and you know we val the evaluation process took a while and you know the reason we settled on uh, four kites was around evaluating the company culture, the product maturity, feature functionality, partnerships and complementing capabilities, pricing and service and support. So where four kites uh, stood out for us was in, in products and capabilities area as uh, four kites had the most accurate ETS in the industry uh, as an example, the GPS ELD data pulled directly from satellites uh, and where the GPS ELDs were not available, carrier link app was available for those carriers. They had multi-stop tracking, they had customizable alerts and notifications, including accurate geofencing, um, and then multimodal coverage, which is very important to us, ability to track loads across rail, OTR, LTL, and ocean. We needed a platform where we could track across all the modes of shipments. We have a huge offshore component that is tracking ocean shipments at con con container level. That means filling the knowledge gaps in these ocean freight with data across the entire uh, chain, satellite data, carrier and terminal data, data from critical points across the route so that any given container can be located anywhere, including when it's uh, moved to water or moved on to the railroads, et cetera. So we needed a visibility platform uh, that should be, uh, or that could, uh, that could uh, demonstrate a proven ability to fill the, all of these gaps across the supply chain so that we could stop wondering where our containers were and where when they will arrive at their destinations. The another important point was around connected to TMS systems and carrier dispatch systems. I believe at that time when we evaluated focus, they had about 60 uh, active connections in the TMSs and 25 with dispatch systems. I'm sure that number's grown. So through their partnership, uh, we also knew that they had uh, trust specific routes that incorporated hazmat and size weight restrictions and so on. So those were important things for us and the consideration. Obviously, from a business standpoint, real time insights into the status was important. Customer service was an important aspect of it. Uh, requirements around asset tracking, um, you know, I've spoken about multimodal things and then uh, predictive machine learning uh, algorithms that uh, forecast provides in terms of smart forecasted arrival and so on were very, very important for us as well. Um, <clears throat> next slide, Peter. So the important thing for, for us was to not to get hung up uh, with various underlying technologies that forecasts had or employed data in terms of capturing the data itself. What was important was to, and what was not to, you know, it was not uh, for us to get into the minutia of APIs or anything of that sort. Uh, but we knew that, you know, Fort Kites had all of this, these APIs enabled and available to us for us to draw upon. And what matters is really is the accuracy and timeliness of the data. So that's kind of the foundation for the predictive ETAs and actionable insights. And that is what we used to build out our integrations, integration with our own systems to make sure that the data was residing in the proper places, reaching out to the, uh, reaching out to all of our users where it uh, needed to be. Um, next slide. All right, so we have several applications that form part of the Edge platform and they are all integrated using uh, web methods. That is our middleware. Uh, so here is a glimpse of in the integrations where Fortkite fits in with our OTM product and all of team deployment. Although the entire Edge applications architecture is extremely complicated, so I've tried, tried to simplify it here. So essentially uh, we send all our shipment information to four kites as it is generated in OTM. Uh, and this is real time that we share information. So for OTR, uh, for OTR and LTLs, once the carriers are confirmed, that is the tendering is confirmed, uh, that information flows over into four kites for rail cars. Uh, similarly, once the rail cars are load, uh, load confirmed in OTM, that information flows over into four kites for containers and brake bulk at load confirm as well. Um, in terms of the you know, users who are accessing the four kites applications, we have the sales, transportation, and logistics who have got access to it. Once we send this information over into four kites, um, the encrypted URL is created as part of the load creation port process in four kites, and that is received back into OTM. Um, and you know, uh, all of that information travels onwards to our ERP system, which is Oracle JD Edwards, and from there onto the other applications as well. So essentially what I say is that then once this information is exchanged, that is where the magic really begins. 
I mean, the tracking really begins. So the tracking updates, location updates, ETAs uh, for trucks, oceans, rail car are received from port guides and updated in OTM. These are then sent downstream to the ERP and other CANFOR examples, uh, other CANFOR applications. In, in the order fulfillment application, as an example, the dynamic ETA updates in o JDE, uh, sorry, dynamic ETA updates that are received from JDE, which came in from four kites to OTM to JDE, helps us keep track of the in-transit inventories and the ETAs um, and ETAs. And, and then in terms of the IP or the inventory position application, similarly, the dynamic ETAs, the encrypted URL, where exactly the inventory is shipped from, uh, the mills to the warehouses, and when does it arrive is all captured and is useful information for the users who are interacting with the inventory position application, essentially the logistics users. Similarly, we've created a dashboard for uh, the rail con congestion, uh, you know, pulling in data from port kites that the uh, transportation and the logistics teams can review. Uh, how many, as, as an example, how many shipments are routing into Chicago in and out, if any stations are embargoed and things like that, you know, that dish, dashboard provides more visibility and clarity in those respects. Lastly, the customer portal that exposes the uh, ETA information over to the customers as well. So sales and customers have access to, uh, access to um, that information. So essentially in all of this, you can see that we're tracking all of truck, rail and ocean modes. Um, and, and the integration is quite complex in how we have managed to, you know, uh, stitch this all together and bring it all um, to the benefit of the user community. Next slide, Peter. <clears throat> yeah, so essentially what uh, we're talking about here is there's native functionality in OTM uh, and then using APIs to uh, integrate uh, with four types. And uh, you know the there is real time information that is being exchanged and called between the uh, between OTM and four types. Next slide, Peter. All right. So opportunities and where are we at with four types? Uh, um, I, I think you can go to the next slide, Peter, on this. So. So so we started in twenty started in twenty eighteen. So uh, you know. When we were having all of our um, edge projects on the go, we also embarked on, uh, you know, uh, the port kites uh, project at the same time. So the important point here is that the project, uh, uh, the you know, the important point here was that the project can't be done on the side of your desk. You know, it has to be given the proper insights. It has to sorry, it has to be given the proper structure of a project need to have a proper project manager assigned to it. We need to have a clear vision of all um, the apps that the shipment information needs to be passed on to. Uh, so initially in our implementation with four guides, we were, uh, we had written more than we could chew, uh, to be honest, like with all of the edge implementations on the go with the pulp and the financial uh, projects that were on the go, plus the move to the infrastructure, uh, infrastructure uh, move to the cloud with AWS, there were a lot many things on the go and we were trying to do the focus project at the same time. And, and this was in 2018. So, you know, obviously we did not uh, at first succeed. Um, and I think there is more to our uh, focus than anything else in that. However, you know, the lessons learned for us is having a proper project structure in place with full focus, a clear vision of apps uh, and, you know, having a, a good team partnership between the business and the IT teams working alongside is uh, is a key. Um, IT certainly uh, has a role to play in terms of integrating the components, but largely I think it's a business enablement program. So having a dedicated team, dedicated team, having a dedicated PM are important things in my mind. So we we were able to get a lot of the things right in 2019, even though we started uh, in 2018. But largely, what had been done up till that point was not uh, you know driving with the business uh, before that, but we were able to turn it around and, and implement it completely uh, right after we went live with the pulp project. The, um, an, another important lesson learned for us was around master data. So the master data needs to be accurate. Um, Geofencing data needs to be, or geofencing setups need to be accurate. So uh, initially we found that address book uh, information that we have stored or master data information that we have in JD Edwards 
uh, or in our systems, it was JD Edwards and OTM uh, did not carry the right ship to addresses or the branch plan addresses and postal codes and so on. So I think making sure that the master data is correct and spot on is very, very important. Um, again, I, I mentioned about geofencing, making sure that the, defining the geofence radiuses, ship from and ship to for ship from and ship to both is accurate and set up correctly. And I, although not master data, mapping the dates between JD Edwards, between OTM, between other applications that we have, such as the ship date, plan departure date, plan arrival dates, uh, across container and rule 11 shipments was not mapped properly initially when we started on this. And that's an important learning for us. Uh, if we were to do this again, we would make sure that we um, you know, uh, address that right up front. Importantly, we also undertook a, a date Kaizen exercise to make sure that we are aligned on our dates across all of our applications. And that has given a lot of confidence to us when we come to you know, future integrations and so on. Don't underestimate the complexity in integration. So, um, you know, we are, we are tracking at uh, uh, container level instead of the booking level. So sending tracking updates from ERP, uh, or, or which is, you know, from coming from OTM um, to the other applications that are there. You know, firstly, having a vision for all of those uh, integrations that need to get built and what information needs to be uh, uh, transfers is important, but just in terms of building out those integrations, testing them out and making sure that they're working 100% correctly, that we don't have any volume uh, of information or, be, you know, there can be uh, plenty of uh, signals that can come in from four kinds. So making sure that the volume of information that is landing in the transportation system is, um, is, uh, is accurate enough to what we need. We're not getting bombarded by too many information, making sure you know, aspects of performance are being looked after and so on. Um, we're not, uh, we were in a situation where we saw a large number of transactional errors show up in our integrations. However, it was uh, in some cases uh, attributed to the timing of things and so on. And then next one for me is like, you know, from a change management perspective, carriers were, carriers were not, uh, you know, ready in some certain cases in our minds, um, not ready for onboarding due to data privacy uh, concerns. And, you know, um, some of, in some cases where we did not have those uh, carriers onboarded, we had loads entering out, which, you know, led to some of the integration challenges and so on and so forth. So putting a business team together, together with the IT folks and four guys, we plan to tackle these high volume carriers and the second tier carriers as well. Um, Specifically, you know, in the in the U.S. Uh, marketplace, we have a lot of spot bid carriers as against contracted. It makes that makes it harder for us to onboard. Um, so, so you know, we have a dedicated team who's working through uh, with four guys in trying to bring this about. Just in terms of the product, uh, the four guys products has matured over the past several years, and it continues to be a leader in their space. Uh, so, make sure that you use the new feature functionality that's there working alongside uh, the customer success teams to uh, you know, ensure proper attention and access to product management resources where the problems are there to solve for. As an example, we worked with uh, Forkite's product management team to ensure that we had, uh, that we had uh, you know, good access to, 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 to the product management team in terms of you know, building out our smart forecasted arrival algorithms and making sure that they were working to the uh, satisfaction on how we wanted it to work. So I can't stress enough on how uh, the dedicated focus team from their, uh, from their product management custom services groups worked alongside our teams to ensure that we work collaboratively in helping us define the problem and finding solutions for us when it came to tweaking um, you know, the machine learning algorithm, making it more suitable for, for use for us. <clears throat> so those were some of the big lessons in our implementation of four guides. Um, just in terms of the ocean shipments, and this is kind of where we stand right now in terms of our, in terms of our ocean shipments, we are uh, tracking 100% of our uh, loads at this point in time. There are some uh, inconsistencies, and we're looking at you know certain areas of improvement, such as uh, um, you know, uh, sorry, firstly in terms of the the inconsistencies around the discharge port information being missing, or some lanes may not have the data for shipping lanes uh, and so on. Um, and we're looking at, uh, and, and the improvements that we're looking at are, we are currently going onto the carrier websites or, or ocean carrier websites to 
uh, complete our booking and get the booking information and so on. Although we do have some EDIs ready to go as well, uh, but we're looking at four kites uh, to help us uh, you know, with, with that integration and bringing all of the booking information as well into, um, into, into OTM. Yeah. If you can move on to the next slide, Peter. So similarly for rail shipments uh, as well, we are tracking 100%. Obviously our consistency is higher and you know, all of this is measured on a quarterly basis. We do have executive business reviews with uh, four guides and they help us uh, with where we stand with things and where we, what are the new feature functionality coming through um, in, this, in, in, the, in the product. Uh, so as an example, we were pre primarily previously using rail link and CN paper platform to manage all of our um, you know, tracking on rail shipments, but you know, with uh, with the maturity, uh, we found that four kites uh, was a better choice for us to go in terms of uh, in terms of tracking these shipments, as we, as the as the um, uh, rail rail link and others were not able to track the ETAs. They were able to track for their individual legs, but not for the entire entire uh, shipment as such. Um, so we continue to work uh, further on these rail shipments to increase the consistency there. Uh, Peter, next slide. So just in terms of uh, truck shipments, and I alluded to a little bit on two things here. One is a smart forecast at arrival and then the carrier on boarding. Uh, so change management, as I said, is a huge aspect of, of this and making sure uh, you know, the data privacy concerns and were are taken care of. Um, and you know, we, in our business specifically, a lot of spot bidding is marketplaces. So there is a lot of spot bidding that is there. So you know, there is uh, there is always this resistance from the carriers and trying to get on uh, or not to uh, use these apps that uh, Forkites has and so on. So we're working collaboratively with Forkites with different uh, mechanisms to see if we can find a way to you know uh, hasten our onboarding of these carriers. Um, yeah, and, and uh, I just want to mention about the uh, uh, one of the uh, enhancements that we're planning for the OTM automatic trailer assignments so to track asset information such as truck and trailer information uh, together with the ELDs. And uh, when the, once the carrier is onboarded, we will know, be able to know where exactly the truck and trailer is and uh, we predict the ETS as well. So we have the lowest uh, you know, adoption at this point in time with the truck shipments, but we're looking to change that curve as we go forward. So that's essentially what I wanted to cover off in uh, today's uh, presentation to give you a glimpse of our journey. I'm sure that everyone else's journey is unique and how you know, uh, Portkites has been a game changer for us in terms of the improving the supply chain visibility across all the modes. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, we thank uh, Portkites for being a partner of choice uh, for, with us for, the, for these last several years as we uh, embarked on this journey together. With that, I'll turn it over to you, Peter. Thank you, Sid. We appreciate that. It's been our pleasure. And thank you for your, con your uh, continued uh, commitment to Four Kites. Uh, thank you for that. And um, I'm going to, uh, if you would stick around a bit where there are going to be some questions here in just a moment, but I'm going to walk through uh, just a few more slides here and then we'll open it up for a Q&A. So get your questions in there now and uh, we'll uh, make sure to provide a few minutes at the end here to answer some of your questions. Um, so you heard a little bit about this uh, through Sid's presentation, and I wanted to kind of summarize all this in terms of uh, what happens at the Four Kites platform level. And as you can see by this uh, diagram here, uh, what Four Kites generally does at some level is aggregate data. And you can see over on the left-hand side, we're aggregating data from a lot of different sources. And a lot of that comes from carriers or your internal systems and GPS devices and other location collection devices, depending on the mode, gets fed into the Four Kites platform where we work our magic. A lot of machine learning is leveraged there and a lot of uh, uh, manipulation of that data so that we can serve that back up to our users and they can consume it in any way and in any location they want, including uh, through their TMS, through their control tower, through the Four Kites platform or a mobile app whatever it is, uh, the real value of it is those six buckets over there on the right, which have a lot to do with reducing costs and improving efficiencies through the supply chain. Uh, we're happy to have conversations with your 
with you about your unique situation, which uh, may share some similarities with CAN4, but is likely going to be a different combination of uh, value equations for you. Um, you heard Sid talk a lot about different modes. Um, he's, uh, CAN4 makes use of a lot of these. I don't think they're shipping a lot of uh, forest products by air, but that's available as well. Um, Forkites has this uh, patented technology uh, for the dynamic ETA suite, uh, and it is proven to be the best uh, ETAs in the industry. In fact, over on the LTL space, uh, where ETAs have been notoriously difficult to come by accurately, uh, our LTAs are, are, I'm sorry, our LTL ETAs are measured at about six times better than what the carrier's own ETAs are. So. Uh, rail and ocean, also notoriously difficult to get a good ETA out of those. We're providing good, consistent, quality ETAs to our customers on those, as well as truckload and air. Um, moving on, um, the, real, uh, the, the, the real question is, can you do door-to-door? -door? Can you do end-to-end? -end? What about these multi-mode, multi-stop, uh, multi-carrier type of loads? And Four Kites has broken the code on that as well. As you see by this illustration here, this is a screenshot of a load coming from somewhere in Spain uh, to the Chicago area. It starts out over the road, gets loaded onto a steamship line, crosses the Atlantic, gets on rail, and then ends the journey with, a, uh, with another over the road uh, leg. So in, in this example, the ETA is recalculated from the time that it left the point of origin at the factory in Spain. And so the receiving end somewhere in Chicago was receiving recalculated ETAs at every stop uh, or every check-in. So you always had the best idea of when that, uh, that uh, container was gonna arrive at the address in Chicago. So moving on, um, I told you that it was available through OTM. This data is available, has been integrated for years uh, with OTM, both on-prem and in the cloud. So a lot of different versions uh, you can get uh, integrated uh, for Kites data. This is an example of the latest version of the uh, of OTM cloud. Um, here's a shipment that uh, is um, has been loaded and is tracking. I won't dwell on these, just suffice it to say that we're integrated with OTM cloud. Um, so much so that here's our, you see what's highlighted there in the red box is what we call the encrypted uh, URL. And with that, the customer can track their own load. So you can send a URL to someone and they can track their own load. And all that can be done door-to-door uh, -door tracking of loads right there from within OTM. No need to punch out to another application in order to track your shipments if you're an OTM user. Machine learning, uh, you've, you've heard that uh, used a lot here in the last 45 minutes, and uh, it's because it factors very large in the Forkite solution. Uh, it's how we provide the greatest ETAs in the industry and allows us to do things like uh, uh, exception management, reporting and alerts and notifications, um, anticipating issues and telling you about things when they happen or even that there's a possibility that it will be happen that it will happen. You see this quote here from our friends at ConAgra uh, on how they're using our uh, exception management. The dashboards give a, uh, some insight into what's happening or what the, uh, what the predictions are that could happen to your loads. And you'll see some examples down there about pot uh, potential delays due to construction, severe storms or flooding. Uh, it occurs to me that um, as our country embarks in a lot of new construction on uh, highways and bridges and roads and, and tunnels, those construction delays and monitoring uh, traffic through those areas are going to be even more important going forward. Um, so machine learning from Forkites is used to help companies mitigate the risk caused by uh, these type of delays. So lastly, uh, Forkites is committed to ensuring your success. And this is really what it gets down to. And I think you heard Sid make comments uh, for each, you know having to do with each of these boxes here. First of all, having to do with carrier onboarding. No shipment tracking uh, project can be successful without successful carrier onboarding. And we're so confident 
in our ability to onboard your carriers, we offer you an actual guarantee that 90% of your contracted truckload volume will be onboarded within the first 30 days. It's an emphasis that we uh, promote to our customers that we are committed to a rapid time to value for our customers. Uh, so you can get started quickly and then we will continue to work with you. Um, you heard Sid talk about quarterly reviews. It really, we're, our people behind the scenes are working with that data uh, even more frequently than that. Our customer success managers are monitoring the success of all of our customers' usage and report back to help them to continue to improve the consistency and the reliability of the data that they're receiving through Four Kites. And lastly, I wanna point out that um, the customer community at Four Kites is a lot like the OTM community. Um, it's a community that's committed to exchanging ideas and talking about their successes and what they've learned from their projects. And people like Sid and hundreds of others get together annually. Our conference, also virtual, will be in October where our customers will provide feedback to, to the Four Kites product team, just as Sid mentioned that he does um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Uh, and then the Four Kites team will also share what's in the roadmap and what's going on there. But more importantly, these customers will have the opportunity again to talk to each other. There's an online community that they're talking all the time and sharing information with our product team and our management about how can we continue to improve real-time value, uh, real-time visibility uh, in their supply chains. So with that, I am going to open the floor for questions and, um, and uh, I'm available as well as Sid to address any questions you might have. So Pam, do we have any questions in the, in the mailbox? Thanks, Peter and Sid. Uh, we do have some questions coming in. The first one is more of an industry question, but they're looking for a comment from Sid on the state of lumber prices and what Camfor <laughs> thinks the trend will look like in the next year. I asked him that same question just two days ago, so he can uh, share with everybody. Sid, <laughs> tell him what you told me. <laughs> yeah, well, I um, sorry, I'm not able to comment on on pricing for lumber. Uh, I'll have to pass on that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have another person who is wondering if uh, supplier inbound logistics are being tracked by Four Kites for Camp Four. Sorry, is that a question for me? Um, yeah, are you, are you using four kites to track any inbound transportation for you? No, we're not. Uh, okay. It's uh, mostly the customers. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have someone asking how long it took to onboard an EDI carrier. Onboard an EDI carrier. I don't have the specifics on uh, how, how long does it take to uh, you know, onboard each and every carrier per se, uh, but you know, generally our, our intention is to uh, you know, move fast with all of this, given that we have a cross-functional team in place with business leading all of that onboarding activities that is there. Um, so you know, you know, having a dedicated team is more important and making sure a good process is set up in place is extremely important to make sure that you know, onboarding uh, works out very well. Right. Okay, Amato is asking, was there a link added to OTM so that the user can get map details from four kites or is the map integrated into OTM's UI? Uh, Sid, why don't you talk about your experience? I think you showed a, a screenshot that had a map uh, built into it, right? Yeah, so, uh, you know, in our, in our, in our case, uh, we use an on-prem version of OTM um, 6.4.1. Um, so uh, we we use the encrypted URL that comes in from four kites and that uh, kind of feeds the information into OTM. Right, and for cloud users, it's basically the same thing. So you can use the uh, internal maps or you can link out to the platform and it's really the user's choice. Great. Dan would like to know which mode was the most difficult to implement and what made it challenging? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, in my mind, the, the ongoing uh, uh, dealings with around change management with the, uh, with, the, with the truckers, I think is probably the most challenging for us. Um, 
you know, we, we have a high level of, uh, uh, high level of um, tracking with the other two modes, ocean and rail. However, mm -hmm. the, the truck is, uh, has, been a, um, has been a struggle. However, you know, we are getting good traction and we have good plans for this year to, to turn that around. Um, you know, doing the integrations, doing the onboarding, I think that, again, I can't stress enough on how good that plan needs to be and how you need to be focused and making sure uh, that uh, you know, the teams are focused on it and then working alongside focus as well, just to make sure that we are uh, getting to uh, a higher level of adoption. So truck, to, the, to, to be specific, truck was probably the hardest for us. Uh, Caleb is wondering what type of trucks you're moving with. And if you think that the carriers operating in this space are less familiar with this process versus a standard van truck carrier. Yeah, we don't use, uh, we're not, we, we don't ship lumber in uh, vans and, and such. So a flat deck is what we use and then spot bidding uh, carriers in the marketplace uh, make it extremely challenging given they're not contracted. Uh, they may be picking up a load uh, a certain day of the week and so on, and then they may not show up and uh, for another month or two or whatever the case might be. So they may not be as uh, motivated to, to join uh, the chip and tracking platform. So that's kind of where the challenges lie really. <clears throat> sure. Um, kind of along those lines, Peter, one for you, does Forkites provide tracking hardware devices to carriers? And how does multimodal multi-carrier tracking work if one of the carriers is not using Forkites tracking tech? Okay. Um, so first of all, no, we're not in the hardware business when it comes to uh, tracking devices. We leverage uh, the equipment already uh, in the truck, train, boat, or airplane. We're picking up signals from existing hardware. So no, we don't, uh, we don't provide hardware. Um, and your follow-up question about uh, how do we do uh, multimodal tracking, um, it, uh, it, does, it requires that we know who the carrier is and uh, you know, the, the, some of the, the sequence of events, of course. And once we have that, we can reach out to them and get some level of tracking. If they are not uh, onboarded, well, first of all, we onboard them. If there's no time for onboarding, then we have that, what in fact Sid referred to it in his presentation called smart forecasted arrival so that we can predict when, um, and this is kind of the last resort is because we've tracked all these lanes before, we know if they leave at a certain time, they should arrive at a certain time. And uh, given the day of the week or the weather conditions or whatever uh, that's existing at that time. So we can stitch together. Obviously it does uh, get more accurate if we have time to onboard all the carriers as part of the, uh, the string of, uh, of carriers used to deliver that door to door. Um, but it, it, it does not get necessarily interrupted just because we've never worked with a carrier in between before. That makes sense. Very cool. Uh, let's see, are you aware of any performance variants with four kites implementation for the cloud versus on-prem? Is that for me? Sure. <laughs> I'm not aware of any performance variants, but I'm not sure I would be, uh, frankly. I'd be happy to check on that to see if there's any, anything, but nothing has uh, come to my attention of any kind of variance in that way. Sure, um, and I can actually share, Land Lakes uses four kites, and uh, we, within the last year and a half, migrated to the cloud, and I don't recall any performance issues uh, being better or worse in on-prem versus the cloud. Great. Well, thank you. There you go. Question <laughs> answered. <laughs> okay. For the tracking URL, do the customers need to secure login to Forkite's application to get the tracking info? No, no, they don't. It, uh, it gives them a, a view of, uh, of of their shipment and don't all they need is an internet connection and a browser. Okay, I said maybe you want to com comment on this one. How accurate is the ocean tracking events on a shipment? Um, you know, as, as, as I mentioned as well in my uh, presentation, from, um, it, it depends on your processes a lot as well, right? In terms of what you are 
looking at uh, capturing and what sort of information, including booking data, et cetera, that you may want to. And, uh, you know, there may be uh, in your master data and your data setups, you know, there may be certain discharge port information, et cetera, that might be missing, which may cause certain uh, trackings to be not so accurate and things like that. However, you know, just from a product standpoint, there is definitely a lot uh, that has happened since we started implementing and we see uh, the tracking is definitely, um, you know, fairly accurate in that regard. Yeah. I'll tell you the, uh, while it's over the ocean that uh, we're getting a GPS ping every hour. And of course it's timestamped. So that's highly accurate while it's in motion. But then of course the data that we get at the ports or at transshipment locations, uh, you know, has to do with the reliability of the data that we're getting from those ports and those terminals. Um, and so, yeah, that that would be, uh, I think you'd get a similar answer from any of our customers tracking Ocean. Any more questions? We do have a few more. Okay. Um, let's see. Peter, how do you handle smaller carriers that don't have uh, ELDs or messaging? Um, let's see. Or the APIs for getting shipment statuses from four kites. Yeah, um, in fact, I think Sid mentioned it um, because that happens sometimes in, in his carrier community is that we use a mobile app that's called Carrier Link. Um, and we ask them to carry that, uh, you know, download that mobile app. Um, and yes, I'm aware carriers are asked to install hundreds of apps onto their phone. And so we provide as much value as we can into that mobile app to give them the incentive to use ours. One of the values that we put on uh, Carrier Link app is free turn by turn navigation. So, something that they're probably paying somebody for today, they can get uh, a good turn by turn navigation right from within the uh, Carrier Link application. So, that's, uh, that's the fallback um, for actual GPS tracking. Then, of course, there's always the smart forecast at arrival, you know, for which we need, again, just the point of origin and you know where it's heading to so uh and when they left so if we know when you left home and where you're going um then we can tell you how long it's going to take uh through our smart forecasted arrival so that that isn't technically tracking but it's giving a very high degree of accuracy for when he should be there given the circumstances um and uh, so that, that's kind of the fallback position is that a smart forecasted arrival. Does that, does that answer the question? I hope. I think so. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sid, we have someone asking how you're capturing LTL rates for a CAM4 business, if that is something you'd be comfortable speaking to. Um, I would say ask uh, the person to reach out separately i i would be more comfortable in that setting just talking Great. about it. sounds good uh peter does four kites cover parcel shipment tracking like fedex ups dhl indeed it does excellent uh sid are is cam4 using gtm within otm no we're not no okay Okay, here's another question on the tracking URL. Uh, they're wondering how it's handled if a shipment has multiple stops on it going to unique customers that you don't necessarily want one to see the other's delivery information. Yeah, that's a really good question. And it does handle that in terms of how it handles that. I, uh, I think that's uh, something we'd like to demonstrate to you. Um, and that's something I am prepared to uh, talk about now, mostly because I'm not a, a product demonstration person, but I'd be happy to arrange a demonstration. So please contact me. You, know, you can either do that through the, uh, through the app here, or you can email me at peter at fourkites.com. And I'd be happy to arrange uh, someone to answer that question and show you how that's done. Fair enough. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. You can mm -hmm. uh, visit fourkites booth under exhibitors and get in right. touch directly with Peter. Okay, are PODs and documents capable to be received to close shipments? Um, is that for me? Yeah. Um, no, it's not. Actually, it, it's, it's arrival at the location. So when the GPS uh, picks up that they've arrived at the destination, 
that closes the tracking uh, process. Uh, we can collect a POD uh, along with other documents can be then associated with the load. Uh, but for, for it to stop tracking, it has to arrive at its uh, appointed destination. Okay, uh, we have time for just a couple more here. Any limitations with the mobile app for the carriers for Android versus iOS? <laughs> no, okay. no limitations and they're, they're both available on their uh, respective stores online. So you can download it and start using it. Excellent. Um, and we'll do one final question here. How does CAM4 handle issues with carriers not wanting to use a visibility platform like Forkites? Beat them to submission. No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I've said that enough throughout this presentation. You know, that's kind of a area where we are working, uh, uh, you know, in a cross-functional setting with the with four guys just to change that adoption curve. Um, and, you know, ensuring that they come along in this journey, maybe it's the mobile apps or uh, that they use, or is it, uh, uh, you know, having access to, more information from from the ELDs and so on. So I think that's still a work in progress in my mind, and I think it'll probably be um, another uh, few months here for us to just to get our um, strategy properly aligned, and then work uh, you know aggressively in trying to onboard uh, most of the candidates. And again, the problem for us mainly is from the spot bid market that we uh, face. I think we've seen a great deal of change in the last uh, four or five years as this uh, real-time visibility category has evolved. Uh, you know, five years ago, there was a great deal of arm twisting required to get carriers to participate, where, whereas today it's much more table stakes. Right? They, um, uh, they understand that their customers are getting value from this and they're competing for business um, just like everybody else. And so they know that this needs to needs to be done to provide value to can for. So I think more and more you're, you're well, you'll see those that list of carriers that are resisting it uh, becoming fewer and fewer. Uh, Sid, would you agree that you're having less and less of an issue uh, having to convince a carrier to participate in visibility? Yeah, I would say, yeah, that's kind of the trend. So projecting forward, yeah, I think it's becoming less and less of an issue. And I think other real-time visibility uh, providers, uh, I think, would agree that it's becoming less of an issue. Definitely, I would agree with that as well. Uh, it's a very different conversation from when we first started working yeah. with Warkites. Well, thank you, Peter and Sid. Very much appreciate you taking the time to present to us today. Um, again, thank you, for Kites for your diamond sponsorship of this event. It really is what's uh, what's making this event possible and so that everybody here can see and experience these presentations at no cost to you at all. So do go and explore their booth and the rest of our sponsors. And thank you guys again for a great session. Hey, thank, thank you. you very much. Enjoy the thank rest you. of the conference, everybody. Thank you. Nice job, Peter. <laughs> Thank you. Are we still? Oh, you're still recording. Yeah. Uh, when?